Good morning, everybody. My name is Tammy Lewis. I am founder of Joyful Mom, a mother of four teenage boys, and I am here to help you find joy in the journey of motherhood. Today, we are going to be talking about boredom in the home. So right now, it is August 4th in 2020. <laughs> if you're watching this some other year, you might know what 2020 was like. Crazy year, right? We have had, oh, pandemic of course is the main thing but we've had bees that, like murder bees or murder hornets like we've had the craziest year right now a lot of moms are deciding whether you're going back to school with your kids if they're sending them full time if you're virtual school or homeschool and we have had at this point a lot of time at home right kids are getting bored kids are starting to run out of things to do. And you've had that, well, not you personally, but we've had our kids on media a lot in the last few months. One of the things I'm hearing from moms is that there is a concern with virtual school and homeschool. And even because sports have been canceled, a lot of them at the schools themselves, after school activities, that the kids are gonna be home a lot more and they're a little nervous of how they're all gonna do having nothing to do. And I totally understand that fear because I used to not embrace boredom, but let me assure you, mama, boredom is one of the best things you can give your kids. It is crazy good for them. Why? Because that is when their creativity sparkles. When they don't have anything to do, and you take media from them. <laughs> if you don't take media from them, they'll just sit there all day. Like that will be what they do. But if you take media from them in love and surround them with opportunity, they will get so creative. It's amazing what your kids will do. I'm going to share with you how I discovered that in a second. I've got a story to tell you that started this whole surrounding them with activity. But for today, I'm going to share with you three different things that we have implemented in our home, or not implement the resources that we have brought into our home to surround our kids with ideas. So let's talk about that. Um, first things first, how do you inspire your kid? Because a lot of us, we could give our kids something, right? But how do you inspire them to actually take action? Sometimes you have to be a little sneaky. So what we have done around our home is we have given them lots of experiences. Take them for a walk. They see a frog. They decide they want to catch the frog and thus starts the creativity. Um, right now you can't necessarily, but maybe later we can take them to a medieval festival. Usually they're very inexpensive to get into. So much creativity will come from that experience. I've taken them to a farm before. Oh my goodness, all of a sudden they wanted to be a cowboy, right? Um, maybe I guess that's a ranch. Yeah, that would be a ranch, not a farm. Anyways, either way, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? An experience will spark creativity. Even movies can spark amazing creativity. You have your little kids, not little, little, but watch something that has inspiration in it, something uh, almost scientific sci-fi like Star Wars, um, Star Trek, Magic School Bus, things like that, those spark creativity in kids. So you watch it together, you talk about it, and then when they get off media, they're like, hey, I would love to make that. Wouldn't it be cool if I could fly to the moon? Well, let's make a moon. You know, that type of thing where you start inspiring. Now, medieval festivals and ranches have been one of the best things we've done for our kids. So let me share it with you because I want to get right into it. The first thing that has sparked creativity in my very active boys. Remember, I have four teenage boys. Um, I've raised two of them from infancy. The other two we adopted five years ago. This was something we put in practice when we lived in Georgia. It's right here. You can't see it. Okay, let me show it you a second. Um, our neighborhood would come to our house. Like ours was the house to be, which as a mom, you always want that, right? Because you can watch the kids. So they would come to our house for our battle supplies. We had the most amazing battle supplies. How did we do that? It was not because I was some amazing mom. It was because I brought in resources for my kids 
to build themselves. They were only seven and nine. They were not that big. This is what we brought in. Can you see that? It is called the Battle Book. And down here you can see it is written, the title of the book is Warfare by Duct Tape. Warfare by Duct Tape. This book, you know what? It's dark in here. I forgot. I forgot my lights. Oh, well. Um, this book was written by two homeschool boys who loved to battle. And what they did is they printed out or they put onto a file so that we could print out ideas that you can create at home. So look at this. See the shield? My kids made that. So simple. See the sword? My kids made that. They made this one. They never did make a helmet, although they made different helmets, just not from this book. Um, actually, they did make that one. Oh, and look at this one, this mace. See that ball chain right there? That, that chain, connected chain? That is all done with cardboard, duct tape, PVC pipe, and foam insulation. So when they would swing, because my boys would make these things, they would go out to the backyard with that shield, and the mace, and they literally would swing this thing over their head, whack each other in the shield. And my thing was, if you have boys at all, you know, like, guys, that's fine, but don't come crying to me. If there's blood, come tell me. But if you just got whacked a little bit and you've been whacking him, like, man up and deal with it because you're battling. If that's the decision you make, then man up a little. <laughs> yes, at seven and nine. And they would. They would hit each other with it, but remember, it was foam. And this provided my boys the battle, or the warfare by duct tape. You can find it on Amazon. It provided my boys with the creativity they needed. I simply brought them the supplies. For Christmas, we actually gave them a cardboard box because they needed cardboard, duct tape, PVC pipe, um, foam insulation, and whatever else was in there. Super simple instructions. And then we gave them this book. And we just printed it out because it was a PDF file. The most amazing gift you can give your kids is creativity. They will love it. They spent hours building. They spent hours battling. They spent hours fixing what broke on their, um, on their weapons. It was so much fun. The whole neighborhood would come to our house, grab a weapon, and they would go out and battle. All the kids were outside. So that is my number one resource for you. Again, you're supporting homeschool boys. They just created this themselves, and they've done a fabulous job on it. I bought mine from Amazon, amazon.com, and it's a, at least at that point when I bought mine, it was a PDF. I don't know if they've put it in book format yet. Okay. So let me tell you how this all started with my kids. We went to a, um, it wasn't a medieval festival. It was another festival of some sort. And they had a man with a bullwhip. And so, of course, my children got in the arena and they start swinging this bullwhip and they learn how to crack the whip. Well, my oldest comes up to me and goes, Mom, I want one, I want one. So, of course, you know, you look at the prices, and it was $100 for a bullwhip for a nine-year-old. I'm like, yeah, no, mm -mm, sorry, sweetheart, not going to buy you a bullwhip. And so I said, but let's go home, and you can look and see if maybe you have enough money to buy one cheaper. So he goes up, goes to Amazon, of course, looks at bullwhips, and they're like $25. He's like, Mom, I can buy one. Because, of course, you take a child to an experience like that, and they want to be part of it, right? He's like, I can buy one for 25. So I don't know how, maybe the Lord just brought this to me because it wasn't something I planned out, but I said, sweetheart, that's fine if you want to spend your money. However, if you learn to make one, I will take you to Home Depot, buy everything you need to make that bullwhip, and I'll pay for it myself, even if it costs more than the $25. And he's like, huh, okay, so he could spend his own money and get it done, but he has to spend his own. Or I'll buy him the supplies and he learns how to make it. You see, if you are new to homeschooling, or if you're new to this virtual thing, or if you just want to give your child inspiration, they will be inspired by you providing the supplies for them. He was so excited. So he looks up online 
and found this 15 minute bullwhip. He found all the, um, not ingredients, supply list for it, <laughs> wrote it out and we took it to Home Depot. We bought enough for, I think, three or four bull whips, and it was still only $35, crazy cheap. And he and his dad learned how to make a bull whip. You see, that's education, right? That is critical thinking. That is problem solving. That is science. They learned about the speed of the, the crack of the whip. It was crazy. Let me show you. This is the bull whip that they made. It has been lovingly used for years and years and years. And yes, it cracks like crazy. And they got the, the experience of making it themselves. Okay, where do we get some of these ideas from? Of course, YouTube has amazing ideas. But the second one I wanted to share with you, so yeah, the bullwhip, if you, that can be a bonus little, I wasn't even talking about that in my three things, but this is um, Look Up 15 Minute Bullwhip by Adam Winrich, I believe it is. Fabulous. We made it for gifts for people. I will warn you, they do need to wear safety goggles and ear protection. Yeah, these things literally crack, like super loud. So safety goggles and ear protection. Okay, second thing resource for you is instructables.com. If you have not heard of instructables.com, it's amazing. They basically have everything you want to make. So it's almost like Pinterest for women who like want to bake or something or make crafts, but this is for people who just want to explore and build things. Your kids will find those amazing things. And your job is simply then you provide them, you take them to the store and provide them the opportunity to purchase some of it. Now, of course, we always have a budget and a limit. Um, but we can make a lot. My kids have made amazing things from instructables.com. And it's usually very cheap depending on what they're looking at. But you can certainly manage, you know, showing them and guiding them of what they can and cannot do. And if there's a bigger project, then they have to save up some money for it. As my kids have gotten older, their projects have gotten more and more intense. And um, they've learned the skills they have learned from their projecting, <clears throat> woodworking sewing. They're learning some welding skills. <laughs> They're learning um, to handle fire. They're I know my house sounds dangerous. It's really not. Um, but they're learning how to drill and how to saw and how to um, use a heat gun to mold plastic. It's been an amazing experience and they're, they don't get bored. Okay. Um, the third thing I wanted to share with you is Mel Science. Mel Science is for those active kids who they want to sit and, and they, they're more thinkers, right? The things I've shown you more are for activity, getting up and out of the house, right? Both of those, the, um, the warfare by duct tape, the bullwhip, instructables, those are very much hands-on outside activities. Mel science is for those times when maybe it's cold outside and you want to just do something inside. It's a science kit and it's all inclusive. I meant to bring it down here. I didn't, um, it's a science kit that you can do in your home. It's fabulous. It explains what science is going on. You still wear safety goggles and gloves because it is some chemistry, so it's a little bit older, but I know there are some for littles too. But again, the stuff that I've shown you here, we started at about seven years old doing some of these and just pouring into the kids of boredom is good, use it to create and use it to expand what you're doing. So uh, resources to get some of the stuff, you, anything, take your kid to Home Depot and they will be inspired. No joke, Home Depot, Lowe's, Toom, wherever you shop, those type of hardware stores will inspire your kids. And they'll say, hey, maybe I can make this. And you know what, buy them a dowel to make an arrow and let them explore it. It may or may not work. We've made bow and arrows from PVC pipe and string and then little dowels that they shoot. It's been amazing. And you, of course, teach them the ground rules, right? But what, what you're teaching your kids is so valuable. Your kids will learn. If I can look it up, I, there's instructions anywhere. I can make anything. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, last thing I want to just talk to you about is a lot of moms right now are struggling with insecurity. And this sounds overwhelming to them because they're like, I, I'm literally just trying to manage my day. If that's where you're at, 
I challenge you to take taking control of the chaos. It is my online course that in three months walks you from kind of those insecurities, which we all have, no matter how bad your, your insecurities are, it will help you process and grow through them and become more calm, more confident in your parenting so that you have space in your head to bring in the stuff like this, to pour into your kids the extra, right? Because this is all extra, but it's the fun stuff that they remember. So taking control of chaos, link is in the description. And it's a challenge to you, take the next three months. It's a video series where I talk to you for like 10 minutes a day via video. Um, it, press play anytime, anywhere. And we talk through abundance versus deprivation. We talk through getting rid of the negative thoughts in your head. We talk through calming your home and how to do that. So take that challenge. Um, you can start now or in September. We're actually going to do a group challenge for it. I'm super excited about that. That will start September 7th. I haven't even announced that yet. Um, so, all right. I believe in you. You were specifically designed to be these kids' mom. And they are blessed to have you. So I hope you enjoyed the resources. I will put them in the link in the description as well, um, where to find those resources. Again, it was Warfare by Duct Tape, the 15-Minute Bullwhip, um, Instructables.com, and Mel Science. I hope that was helpful for you. Mom, you are doing a great job. Please follow me. Uh, like the video, please. Subscribe to the channel. That helps you see my videos every single week. And share especially if you haven't joined my Joyful Mom, Dis Mom discussion group. Share that group and get involved in it. That's where I show up most. God bless and have a fabulous summer vacation.